Um, on behalf of the Chesapeake High School um, community, we just want to thank you and highlight you for all that you do for our students and our staff. <laughs> And once again, we'd like to thank Nurse Kisser for everything she does. She doesn't get enough accolades um, as it is. So thank you for being our CHS Spotlight. And shout out to Coach Charlie for our Tell Us Something Good segment, where his article is now featured in the BCPS team blog on bcps.org. Welcome to the BNN Show. I am one of your hosts, Mr. Faust, here with one of my favorite people in the world, Mr. Evans. Mr. Hey. Evans has the privilege to say the date. Today. Friday, March 31st, 2023. All right, what's coming up after the announcements? Coming up after the announcements, we have our Bayhawk of the Quarter and our winner of our Faculty Council Olympics. Our Faculty Council Olympics, we've been waiting for it, and teachers, now you get to see who won that. But first, we are going to our Women's History Month on uh, Schoology. For our uh, poet and author, Audrey Lore, used her writing to shine light on her experience of the world Oh, you got a world as a black lesbian woman and later as a mother and person suffering from cancer. All right. Um, a prominent member of the women's and LGBT rights movement, her writing called attention to the multifaceted nature of identity and the way in which people from different walks of life could grow stronger together. Thank you, Ms. Honka, Ms. Funkhauser, for all of our facts for women's history. Month. That's right. She's done a real good job all the way through the month of March. And actually, we also like to spotlight the gym program with their women history segments. And in honor of that, we would like to present our final women's segment sponsored by the gym program. This is Nene Ann Naima with the Gem Women's History Month Spotlight. Ruby Bridges is a lifelong activist for racial equality and became the first African American student to integrate an elementary school in the South in 1960. Despite the mistreatment and segregation in schools, at the age of six, she decided to dis desegregate the all-white William France Elementary School. The only way Ruby was able to attend the school was because she passed the exam African American students had to do to attend the school. She was one of the only five that passed the exam. At first, her parents were hesitant to allow her to attend the school because of her safety, but eventually they allowed her to go. Eventually, Ruby graduated from a desegregated school, became a travel agent, got married and had four sons. Ruby wrote about her early life experiences in two books and received the Carter G. Woodson Book Award. In 1999, she created the Ruby Bridges Foundation to promote tolerance and create change through education. A famous quote from her is, Racism is a grown-up disease and we must stop using our, our children to spread it. This is Nene and Naima with your Women's History Month Spotlight. Have, Have a great day. Thank you once again to the gym program. That's such a poignant quote, and you know, every time I see a picture of like Ruby Bridges or someone who was a part of that, that time, I'm, I'm always kind of like shocked just to just see how relatively young they are relative mm -hmm. to how long ago we might think those experiences are. I mean, these are re relatively young people. These are people who are still, you know, active members of their community, folks who are around today, you know, yeah. affected in such a deep way. I think it's so weird. Like, that was one of the best ones we have because Ruby Bridges, like, she made such an impact for everybody the idea of just being able to have uh, integration going on within schools, but she's still alive. And we, we look at her and we like honor her as if like, she's not alive, but that is actually a great point your point. And yeah. uh, so happy and thankful for the gym program and Ms. Funkhauser for bringing up the salient points 
especially during Women's History Month. So once again, thank you very much to the gym program and to Ms. Funkhauser. I'll do this part. Before we begin our announcement, let's go to Ella from the freshman class with information regarding the raffle for the freshman class dues. Class of 2026, we have a winner for the class dues raffle. Our winner is Aubrey Hilton. We would also like to highlight Molly Brooks, who paid her dues for all four years. Make sure that you both stop by the counseling office on Friday, March 31st to pick up your prize. Congratulations, Aubrey and Molly, for your freshman class dues. Please stop by the counseling office to pick up your prize. Stopping our report this morning. And here we go for me in school news. Interested in a career in landscaping? Want to start your own business? Well, Frankie Valentin from Final Cut Landscape and Tree Care will be here at CHS on Tuesday when we come back, April the 11th at 9.30 a.m. to discuss careers in landscaping. He will also discuss how he started his own landscaping business. If you would like to attend, check the CHS hub on Schoology for the link to sign up. In class news, attention juniors, today is the last day to apply for your work experience or internship program. If you're considering a half-day option for your senior year, please make sure you've applied to one of these programs. Please stop by office number four with any questions or concerns. Those of you who've already submitted your application, there'll be an informational meeting once we return from spring break. And in sports news, we want to send a congratulations to the Allied softball team for their win in their first game of the season against Lansdowne. The score was 15 to 12, with runs by Kayla, uh, Alicia, Corey, and Elijah, and double plays made by Corey and Kayla. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and send a shout-out if y'all want to come back to the camera one real quick. Come out and support your Bayhawks in their quest for another perfect season and division championship once again. Congratulations. All right. At this time, we'd like to announce the winner of the Faculty Olympics. And you go to camera three on that. In a shocking upset to STEM teachers everywhere, arts and humanities educators at Chesapeake High School secured the title of Olympic champion, receiving the coveted McMillian Cup. Mr. Faust, I'd like to say that this proves what we already knew. And what's that? You're not supposed to ask that. Oh, I'm not supposed to ask Don't that. ask that. But uh, if y'all are not aware to all teachers, the winners of our faculty Olympus is Mr. Evans and myself. I will always... <coughs> it's relevant. It's relevant to us. But I would like to say this. On behalf of myself and Mr. Evans, we always knew that we had it in us, and that's very important. Right. And just understand, it's going to be hard for you to beat us in the next five years. Almost impossible. Right. Uh, also, right, I don't if, see I it may, happening. if I may, let me just go ahead and do this. Oh, you, you may. You may. I may. You may. I may. That's what happens you when you actually win the Faculty Olympics. We can do that. We can do it. Once again, we like to say, good to be king. Right here, Mr. McMillian, the Robert McMillian Cup. That is actually him right up here. And um, we will drink from the cup of victory for Faculty Olympics. Once again, I'd like to thank that. But not only are we winners today, uh, our teachers and staff and our students are winners today because now we would like to leave you with our Bayhawk of the Quarter. It only happens once a quarter, and these are the students selected by the departments. So until next time, I want to thank Mr. Evans for everything, my partner in crime. He's also a Faculty yeah. Olympic champion and myself. And until next time, I'm Mr. Faust. Now we'll leave you with the Bayhawk of the Quarter.